Good afternoon and many thanks for joining us. This is KTN News Desk, where news is brought to you as it happens. Good My name is Boni Tunya. Good afternoon. My name is Edith Kimani. It's a pleasure to have you with us. Let's get this show on the road. Well, let's kick off this bulletin in Mombasa where Isa Timami, the Lamu governor, has been released. Remember, he was arrested last week in connection with the Lamu massacre that left 65 people dead. Well, Ferdinand Omondi, our senior coast reporter, is standing by and has all the full details for us. Um, now, Ferdinand, it is a release, but it doesn't come deep, does it? No, it doesn't. Uh, the governor was released this morning by uh, the judge and uh, he was released on a 20 million shilling uh, bond plus two shares of the similar amount. The alternative was a, f a 5 million shilling cash bail, which he deposited. And a few minutes ago, he already addressed the press, a very relieved man, uh, saying he started his night, uh, you know, the Ramadan last night. So he came out saying he was feeling a little weak, but he was happy at last to be free to go back to his family and observe the Holy Man in relative freedom. On the same day, also, the women rep for Mombasa, Mishimboko, was also charged with incitement, uh, which he denied and was released on a cash bail of 200,000 shillings, uh, which he also paid up and had to be mentioned on the 4th. Uh, of August. So the two people have been out here, the very many political leaders who came here to give uh, a show of solidarity uh, for the UDF, that is for Shimami, none other than the party leader, um, Musele Mudavadi, was here. And for Mishin Boko, the lead council, James Oren, was there. The council of governors, uh, deputy chair Salim Bure, who was also the governor for Kwale, was also around. Mombasa governor Hassan Joho and uh, Moses Sutangula, the co-partner. Uh, co and several other members of parliament. And the message that we received from everybody who was speaking was the interpretation that these cases were calculated political assault against elected leaders. And that is what they're actually fronting the people right in front of the Mombasa locals as we speak. They're addressing the public and everybody is saying these are state-sponsored political assault. All right. Now, Ferdinand, I'm glad you've introduced that aspect of politics. It has garnered uh, quite a bit of controversy with Isa Timami himself saying that he's being persecuted by corruption cartels. Has he said anything else with regard to that today? Yes, he was very guarded in the statement he made today, but he said that he will continue fighting for the rights of all the people of Namu, underline the word all. And he also said that if what is if his fight against the rights for all again the people of Lamu is what people are against for is something for which he challenged the state to take him back because he said he would he would not stop the same thing uh, madam Mishimboko, uh, there were statements which she made at a rally and she said she's willing to repeat those statements because she the statement that she made were also vested on our foundations in the constitution about the power being vested in the people and not the state and she actually repeated the same words and said that ours is to fight for the rights of women for the rights of children for the rights of the elderly and not even a court case will stop her in what she said the governor Hassan Joho himself went ahead and even made some of those statements against which the Maimu was charged and said he will repeat them you'll be able to see them later on in the story after they have been moderated but yeah the coastal leaders right now looks like they are spoiling for war over the two cases all right and Ferdinand we're not going to see Timami in court again uh, for another month what is yes. his game plan until then well, he has said that from here he's going back to exercise his mandate in Lamu. He was about to prepare for annual budget, so he says he's going back to serve the people of Lamu and to let the lawyers handle the cases. The other leader said that this is something that will always let the, cost, the, case, the court case to continue. But uh, the warning they have sounded out, particularly from what the governor Joho says, is if the, the state, according to them, is trying to uh, paralyze the Lamu County government, they might as well go ahead and try Kilifi, Mombasa, Kuala, Taita, Taveta, and warn them that they will not succeed because this is now uh, the people of, of the course, as they were saying, against what they perceive as a political assault sponsored by the state. So they say they proceed with their work as usual, and the way the court case continue, but are putting the state on notice. All right, thank you very much, Ferdinand Omondi, joining us from Lamu. Remember, a Mombasa court today set Governor Isa Timami free on a bond of 20 million shillings or a cash bill of 5 million shillings.
Right, moving on, a section of political leaders from Muranga County have asked the Inspector General to prosecute Kord's leadership over what they term as inciting utterances. Uh, the leaders led by Kagumo Member of Parliament Jamlek Kamau says that even though the Constitution does allow freedom of expression, it also prohibits incitement and asked the Inspector General of Police to act with urgency to curb the tension spreading in the country. The Kandara MP Alice Wahome also called on Kenyans to refuse to be drawn into what she termed as desperate moves made by leaders of the Coalition for Reforms and Democracy. And I want to speak today from the bottom of my heart. I think we are making a big mistake by making Raira Rook so important and so big that he calls for a sabasaba -saba and everybody starts panicking. Personally, I do not think anything will happen on sabasaba. -saba. If anything, I highly doubt that people will even be going to that sabasaba -saba rally that he'll be calling. Because the law also prohibits people who are likely to incite Kenyans into violence, it is possible to actually take the court leadership, the entire leadership to court. I know it is possible that that is what they are looking for. Eight people were last evening injured after a bus they were traveling in, um, rather, after a bus they were traveling in overturned at Mumberes area along Eldoret Nakuru. The injured were rushed to Eldama Ravine Hospital for treatment, and according to the drive, uh, driver of the bus, the accident occurred after he tried to avoid a head-on collision with a trailer coming from the opposite direction. The accident happened barely a day after a fatal accident at Miga area, that's in Salga Trading Center, along the same road, killed four family members who were traveling from Eldoret towards Nakuru. <laughs> Kuna kamini basi karikuwa mbele yangu. Kaka sumama na mini kasumama. Sasa shinde katokea hapo. Sasa kuenda kusumama kabisa, diwe sumama kabisa, ikawachiria mbuliki. Ili basti. Mbusa, sauli, ni sumama na mbuliki mingi. Mbuliki na hard mbuliki. Eh? Na ikaweka hata mark. Eh? Kusumama, ikawachiria maramoja. Sasa nikaona hakuna jie ingine. Kuenda pande itasoma sati, itasoma sotivi. Hapo itatuwa wote. Waiti watu unajua watu naamuka. Waka itingisa ikaanguka. Ika Gari ilianguka kama ya imezimika. Kupuza balanzi ikaanza kuroli. Ikaanza kuroli. Gari ilerori maratatu. Kuna mtoto ameumia sana lakini tunamuambea mungu wa msaidia. Kuna wengi wamepoteza fahamu. Kuna wengine wameumia. Na mkini mina shukuru mungu sijaumia. Lakini wenye wameumia na tunawambea wapate kuponya. Are you proud of your personality on social media? Well, because it turns out that ethnic vitriol and divisive political statements continue to be the darkest side of Kenya's social media. Now, as Kenya joins the rest of the world in marking the fifth World Social Media Day, online writers and social media enthusiasts noted the power uh, social media has to transform governments and the lives of citizens if used positively. Speaking at the event, at a Nairobi hotel, Dennis Sutumbi, the director of digital communication in the office of the president, hinted at the possibility of a joint social media policy between Quad and Jubilee to give direction to how both sides can engage online. It doesn't really matter which political divide or persuasion you belong to. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's move the social media conversation from the political agenda Overall, uh, looking at the place of social media, just as it sounds in our day-to-day -day lives, then I think, especially for the productive workforce, we, we need to really uh, try to see how we can be able to anchor an element of balance. Social media has really infringed on the rights of the journalist. We have anchors who have been targeted on social media. We have reporters who have been branded on social media. And it has taken really a very bad shape for those of us who belong to this uh, media profession. Uh, there are journalists who have been jubileed or branded jubilee moles and editors. 
There are reporters who have been called, uh, coded reporters, and this really is not good for the profession. Next is a story we are all proud about. Um, in a record three months, the Makutano Kadimani Road in Machakos was tarmacked. Now, this is the first tarmac route built and finished by a county government in Kenya. This uh, historic feat in Machakos County was commissioned in mid March under Governor Alfred Mutua's ideology of Maendeleo Chapcha, which fronts the, you to, um, the, the need to foster uh, um, development and move faster in the future. In a record of three months, the county of Machakos has been able to accomplish a feat that no other county in Kenya has. Songs of celebration fill the air. Dancers keep the rhythm. Once again, the people of Machakos County have something historic to shout about. We are opening the fastest built highway in Kenya and possibly in Africa. 33 kilometers in only three months. We can spend 650 million Kenya shillings instead of the proposed 1.6 billion Kenya shillings for the road. The Makutano Mamwala Tukithimani Road is a critical linkage road, cutting across Machakos County, joining Garissa Road to the Machakos Kitui Road. Before. Na hii barabara ilikuwa haipitiki. Tulikuwa tukitoka Kangunda, tulikuwa tukifika hapa. Tunataka kuvuka kaba twende ili twende mwingi lakini haikuwezekana zamani ilikuwa na mashimo mingi ilikuwa inasababisha nini ma accident lakini siku hizi iko sawa kabisa Residents consider it to be the most important transport and economic road. For more than 50 years, Machakos leaders had promised to construct it, leaving it at that, just a promise. But now with devolution and a county government, that promise has become a reality. Na hii lami ndiyo ugatuzi. Sisi hatuoni governor mtuwa kwa gazeti. Hatuoni akiwa tamazishi. According to civil engineers, it takes an average of one month to build a kilometer of road. So for this 33 kilometers, it would have taken an average of three years to build. The question is, how do you construct 30 kilometers in three months when a road between Iten and Bukari, which is 12 kilometers in my county, has taken five years, which is only 12 kilometers? We need to make that difference. We divided the road into 11 sections and gave it to 11 different contractors, each with three kilometers. At the ma contractor kama ulitengeneza hiyo barabara kulingana na kile kiwango cha National Road Service inavyotakikana. To clear the doubt of quality, the Machakos government assigned a supervising civil engineer to each of the 11 sections for monitoring, testing and approval. In addition to lighting and signage, Calverts, bridges and railings were constructed simultaneously. This project also offers power to neighboring homes and schools. The governor insists that under the Machakos ideology of Machakos Chap Chap, Wanainchi shouldn't have to wait for much needed development just because of politics. Dorcas Wangira, KTN, Machakos County. Maendeleo Chap Chap, I don't think anyone can argue with that. Let's have that Another divisive issue, Nyanza's top-ranked principal has spoken out against the Reproductive Health Bill that proposes to issue school-going children with contraceptives to help reduce teenage pregnancies. Now, Jennifer Pondi Andedo, who heads Nyamira Girls High School in Bondo, which is in Siaya County, has termed the move ill-conceived and likely to affect the development of young minds. Andedo was last week ranked among top principals in Kenya during the annual convention of school heads that was held in Mombasa. The Nyamira head also issued a word of encouragement to fellow female principals who rarely receive such accolades. Let us students to remain focused and let us know what, what is the priority as at now. Why is the priority the contraceptives? Uh, is it what will add value to, our fu to their future? So let us just um, uh, teach them and train them to be morally upright. Welcome back. If you're seated here, you know we, talk, we, have, we are just about to have our afternoon business chat. And I stumbled on my words because I was trying to get the name of my um, interviewee right. Now, today we're talking about 
the African tech space. And a lot of initiatives have come to the fore in trying to encourage this. The latest of them is an initiative called the African Tech Challenge um, that is being run by AVIC. But I'm joined by a gentleman who will help us understand why this is so important now. The short form of his name is Hong, but it's Hong Xiang Huang. Yes. I got that right? Yes. Hong, um, if you, uh, before even you get to what you're doing, if you were to compare where Africa is in their tech space and where China is in terms of their thirst and their hunger for this, how do they rate? Uh, what, do you, what do you exactly mean? I mean, um, you were setting up this tech challenge in, in the country, yeah. um, obviously from a lot of lessons and um, programs that have already worked elsewhere. Um, what do you see as different in the Kenyan sp space? Well, I would say Kenya's today is just China's yesterday. So what happened, what is facing Kenya now, faced China not very long time ago. Right. That is why I think China compared to the West, we actually have more lessons for mm -hmm. Kenya, for Africa to learn about. All right. Take us through this tech challenge. How exactly uh, is it rolled out? Who can participate? Well, essentially, Africa Tech Challenge is a competition with that aims to help young Kenya to have a better technical career opportunity. Right. Essentially what we do is we offer technical training for the young graduate students of Kenya to participate, right. to learn about how to use the machineries. And then we offer them an opportunity to compete. And when they excel in this kind of competition, some of the top two teams will be awarded with contracts. Right. And a lot of the students will be awarded with internship or even work opportunities. So they're not just the getting industry. money, they're getting contracts. Yes. What kind of contracts are these? Manufacturing contract. Okay. Essentially, approximately, there would be about $100,000 contracts awarded to the top two teams right. for them to actually manufacture some things. Mm -hmm. The idea of, of us, it was today, it's like the world is like made in China, but we wish that tomorrow it would be made, made in, in Kenya. Kenya. Right. Hong, who can participate in this? Are we talking about students? Are we talking about small manufacturers? Who exactly is eligible for this? We are mainly aiming at the students from the technical institutions all over Kenya. Right. Right. All right. Great. Uh, so we are looking at, obviously, the beneficiaries are going to add value to the manufacturing scene. From where you, you see it, what do you think is the biggest challenge facing Kenya's manufacturing space now? Well, I think the biggest problem is the, the, the disconnection between like education and the industry. Right. Because, for example, we have visited a lot of the schools in different parts of Kenya. Right. In a lot of the place, we actually see the students, sometimes they have the machines, but they are not really using that very well, mm -hmm. especially not to connect them not to be able to connect them with the industry. They have the good machines and there's demand in right. the market right. for this kind of machine to produce something. Mm -hmm. But it's very disconnected. Right. That's what we are trying to make the connection happen. So this obviously will involve probably changing the curriculum that is being taught in schools. Well, I'm not a very uh, expert about that, but I would say we would learn in practice and we would try to explore what would be a better way for Kenya. Right. Looking at China, how do they get right? Um, just creating the connection between what is taught in class and, and what happens in the industry. Yeah, so essentially what happened in China is first Chinese government spent, pay a lot of attention to the technical training institution. Right. They really try to improve the quality of education. They try to improve the, the, the machines they, they have. And then when the student, they want to fix, fit the curriculum with what is really needed in, this, in the industry. So once the students stay finish the course, they actually would be able to get a job in the market. All right. Finally, Hong, um, what are the dates? When is this starting? Uh, the, we are, at this moment, we are still visiting different university and technical institutions all around Kenya right. so that we can figure out the, the exact, exact competition days. Mm -hmm. But it would be, approximately, it would start in July. The training and the preliminary right. competition will be in July. Right. And in August, we have the final training. And maybe at the beginning of September, we'll have the final competition. All right. Great. And uh, we'll be in touch to see exactly how it takes off. Yes. I've Thank been you. speaking to Hong Xiang Huang, who is the director of China House. And what they're doing in the country is try to set up an African tech challenge that merges tech innovation and the manufacturing space. It is. Well, it's now time to wind up this edition of KT and News Desk, but a good note to end it from. Right. Um, innovation, that's right. definitely something that we need to keep pushing as a country, isn't it? We do. We do. Well, and that's where we wind up this edition of KT and News. Is that Suarez joke? Oh gosh, I thought you had forgotten. Okay, so Suarez gets home after a busy day at work and uh, the wife asks him, are you hungry? And he goes like, I already ate at work.
<laughs> that was funny. That was funny. Does she ask, what did you have? And he responds, Italian. Uh, uh, we didn't get to that level. <laughs> <laughs> did you know, there are some people who can remember every single day of their lives. The condition is called hyperthymesia. I want that. I suppose it's the opposite of amnesia. Yeah, yeah. Well, you learn something new every day. Good afternoon. I'm Edith Kimani. My name is Bonnie Tunya. Good afternoon. Our country. What's up, Kenya? How are you guys doing? My good name is DJ Crowbar, the master record selector. And they call me the mix genius, DJ Sadi. Join us every Monday to Friday for Tenderezza from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. where we bring you inspiring, uplifting, encouraging gospel music. And of course, every Saturday. You guys think your tab has a problem? Oh, sorry, this one is for Wednesday. Every Saturday. Join us for Tenderezza Live, where we bring you the best in gospel mixes. From 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. We break all TV rules for your entertainment. We will set your TV on fire. Next, on Ajabu. Get all your data, SMS and call needs in one convenient pack that you can use across networks. A drunk dreamer disrupts the peaceful calm of a Nairobi suburb. A harmless game turns into a battle with the police. Plus, a man tries to survive an interaction with the police. Choose a Tosha pack from 10, 20, 30, 50 and 100 shillings. Dial star 767 hash to get started. Airtel. prayer today god is setting you free in the mighty name of jesus every single word you speak is a seed you have sown when you open your mouth to speak it is victory i am glorious and god is glorious it's our emma don't fear that situation don't fear that rejection maybe what you're going through will be a platform for your ministry taking pride in constructing tomorrow's skylines adding strength to kenya's landmarks Presenting the power of 
for specialized constructions. Cementing the nation's future. Simba Cement, the strength and pride of Kenya. Every day our hands pick and transfer germs from different surfaces to us. Even hands that look clean can have lots of unseen germs. Kids, go wash your hands now. And because soaps are usually shared by more than one person, they can become dirty leading to multiple germ transfer. That's why I prefer to use Dettol Liquid Hand Wash. Every drop is pure because it's untouched by other hands. Dettol Liquid Hand Wash gives 10 times more protection against germs that cause diarrhea and other infectious diseases, leaving hands hygienically clean. For a healthy family, use Dettol Antibacterial Hand Wash. Dettol, in partnership with the Kenya Medical Association. Be 100% sure. Samba, Samba, Samba. To get the latest from the world's biggest soccer extravaganza, SMS the word CUP to 21152. Just SMS the word CUP to 21152. Good afternoon and welcome to Samba Buzz on KTN where we will be telling you everything that you need to know about the 2014 World Cup and how far uh, we've gone. And of course today we'll be biased just a little bit because uh, two of the Africa's uh, representatives will be in action tonight. And do you think they can pull a surprise? I don't know. But in studio I have a panel that will help us decide and probably digest look at the possibilities and the impossibilities of the African teams probably qualifying for the quarterfinals. Uh, we have Harold Ndege, uh, yes. a former Kenyan Premier League uh, player. We also have uh, Kamanga, uh, who is a soccer analyst. And on that far side, we see uh, Colombia. Um, I think it's the first time I'm seeing someone in a Colombia jersey. And I think Colombia is going places, but we'll be coming uh, back to that. So first, before we come back to Africa and just have a look at how the African teams may do tonight, let's have a look at the, uh, last night's results where we saw uh, Costa Rica, of course, uh, sail through uh, together with Netherlands to the quarterfinals. Let's have a look at the results. Netherlands' controversial late comeback kept the World Cup dream alive as they edged out Mexico. Mexico got the open after Dos Santos got the ball that he had out. Hello of Dele Blind and thrummed a powerful wonder shot in the bottom corner on the turn. Dos Santos, Blind after him, Dos Santos with a shot! Dos Santos with the goal! Mexico take the lead! Just as the Dutch looked out on their feet, Schneider rescued them, pouncing on a loose ball from a corner and firing an unerring shot beyond a chore to level. But might get away with it. Schneider! 1-1! One, one. Three minutes from time. Where's with the extra time looking likely, Robin raised to the right hand edge of the penalty area and was brought down by Rafael Marquez for a penalty that Huntler slotted home for the winner. Huntler scores! Last state, here we come. In the other match, Costa Rica made it to the quarterfinals for the World Cup for the first time in history after beating Greece 5 3 in penalty shootout in Recife. Ruiz, that's it. Breakthrough time in Recife. So, Catri's Papasto Paulo's injury time equalizer for Greece cancelled out Brian Ruiz's side footed opener and sent the game into extra time that provided no goal. In penalties, the Ophelas Gekas missed for Greece and Michael Umana settled the tie. 
The Central American side surprise qualifiers from group containing England, Italy and Uruguay and they go through to face Netherlands on Saturday as their unlikely run at the World Cup continues. And of course, here yeah, we see the Netherlands and Costa Rica are through to the quarters and they'll be playing against each other. And just to have a look at the Netherlands match, Moses, I will start with you. I'm tempted to start with Harold, actually, but I think he's two Netherlands. <laughs> so I'll start with a more neutral <laughs> party. Moses, your thoughts uh, on the Netherlands match? Did they qualify fairly? Yeah, they qualified fairly uh, because I know the, the penalty was uh, very con uh, intentious on, but a penalty is a penalty, and uh, when a goal is uh, slotted home, it's remained to be a goal. It was a, a, a fair game, but uh, I think the Netherlands need to up their defense, and uh, they need also to have the sparkling effect that they had in their opening match uh, and uh, uh, thrashing Spain. But uh, its display did not uh, warrant me the victory because actually. Mexico was winning that match. It was just uh, Robin, uh, uh, last minute uh, uh, dive per se. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, come the on, do you think win. Robin dived? I, I was was I that totally, a dive? I totally disagree. Uh -huh. You have to admire at the, 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 the adversity that uh, the, the Dutch were put under. To begin with, the climate, the, the weather was in favor of the, Mex the Latin Americans. Mm -hmm. These Europeans, it was way, way against them. For them to fight back, with an early injury in the, the, the 10th minute, to, for them to fight back and actually get back into the game. And you could see the way Van Gaal kept switching tactics until he found his mark. Mm -hmm. You have to admire that. I mean, that's what football is made of. And Harold, <laughs> when this tournament was starting, uh, many people looked at Netherlands and tipped Netherlands to actually get to the finals. Now we have watched them play. Mm -hmm. They are through to the quarters. But are you convinced that they can actually make it to the finals? They still can. Uh, we, we, it will be very wrong for us to dismiss Netherlands because of yesterday's match. As Kamanga has just said, uh, the weather conditions are not favorable. Playing under uh, uh, 40 degrees Celsius. Uh, uh, percent humidity. Uh, yeah, and humidity it's in that crazy. particular. You could even see Robin Van Persie could not move. On the other hand, even the Mexicans have themselves to blame. After Dos Santos' goal, uh, their coach made a very big tactical blunder. Instead of him focusing on still attacking and getting a second goal, goal to, to seal off the match, yeah. what he did, he removed the Santos and put on a defensive player then. He was inviting pressure on himself and you could see at the end of the day, uh, they couldn't, they succumbed to the pressure. Yeah. yeah. And gentlemen, Van Passi, Van Passi, Van Passi. So, what happened yesterday? I think yeah, yesterday Van Passi was nowhere in the match. And uh, probably that's why he had to be substituted. I think it's because of the, uh, the, the temperatures. The weather was too much. A, a game that we, for the first time, had uh, uh, two cooling breaks. Uh, so it's uh, uh, tactically, I think he was out, even outsmarted with the uh, Mexican defense, which was uh, uh, not giving him room to maneuver. Mm -hmm. Because every time Van Persie moved, someone was uh, moving with Van Persie. It was marked. It yeah. was marked 24-7. I think with that, plus the uh, high uh, temperatures and uh, the levels of humidity, Van Persie was nowhere in the match. Mm -hmm. Well, sometimes it happens. A player can go off color in a match. It's uh, it's not out of it's the blue. It's part of the game. Yeah. It's part of the game. Uh, my cue, these, these these are human beings. They are sure. just robots. They are supposed to perform every now and then. Uh, but it was also a learning lesson for for the Netherlands that uh, uh, once Robin Van Persie could not click, uh, Luis Van Gaal had to find another tactic. And you saw the introduction of uh, uh, the left midfielder. It changed, it changed the game completely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, and I think too much on the Netherlands match. Maybe let's not focus on uh, Costa Rica, Greece. Your thoughts, uh, Kamanga? That was an interesting game. Actually, personally, before the game, I had totally written off Greece. I thought they yeah. they stumbled into the, 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 the knockouts yeah, against by Ivory luck. Coast, yeah. Clear, clearly, <laughs> it's because of the... <laughs> the, <laughs> the, the Warriors were not serious. Yeah. Yeah. But otherwise, yesterday they showed they are a serious side because you could see... Uh, from the foundations that were laid back way back in 2004 when they hosted the, the Euros there, eh? and uh, the German tactician, uh, Otmar Hitzfeld, you could see they, they've, they've internalized that counter-attack, their defensive and counter-attacking system. It's really deep in, within their, their culture now, their footballing culture, mm -hmm. and, and the, it's a very difficult team to break down. Mm -hmm. And then when uh, Duarte got a red card, it kind of just... Costa Rica just was ha basically handing them the game. Mm -hmm. So I'm even, they, they, even Costa Rica must count by themselves lucky because of the heroics of Neila Navas. I mean, he's, apart from Ochoa and uh, Enyema of uh, 
of uh, Nigeria. The this is, uh, keeper, yeah. this is uh, another goalkeeper who's proven, I mean, he's serious. He's not joking around. He really kept them in the game. I think talking about uh, uh, Navas, you can see even the way he played against e in England and even the group Uruguay. Uh, stage, even Uruguay and mm. also Italy. Mm. He's the one who most probably finishing their group with seven points. Yeah. I mean, that his team that uh, him. yeah, mm. ranked as underdogs in the in the team. Credit to to the Levante goalkeeper. Of course, then Mr. Ranger, do you think uh, uh, Netherlands ball probably have a smooth sail against Costa Rica or is it going to be an equal contest? At, at, at this time of the competition is not going to be smooth for, for any team. Which have every team that uh, has has uh, uh, <coughs> has come of age up to this now up to this time right now it's going to be difficult for us to say that uh, this team is going to be a whitewash, this team is not going to, to qualify well. Every team that is in this competition, this particular juncture, deserves to be there. So it's going to be very wrong for us to say that uh, uh, certain teams will not perform well. Having said that, I think uh, the, the Greek, the way they approach uh, the competitions, uh, tactically they're not very good, technically they're not very good, it's but mentally, yes, yeah. Yeah. mentally they yeah. come into the match knowing very well we have to get a result here. Yes, you could see even through the group stages, the first match they tried to open the match they were wallowed yeah. you know so it is something that it is within them even you could see in the euro 2004 when, when they won against portugal yeah, to, uh, to mentally start, they usually come in very strong but tactically they usually yeah. not there to start the mental strength was not able to take them through uh, through to the quarter finals uh, but then again we'll now take a short break but we'll be right back where we'll be focusing on the african team that is nigeria and algeria will be in action tonight do stay with us Time to attend the one and only Samantha's Bridal Wedding Fair at the Sarit Center. There will be an amazing fashion show every day from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. and 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. Entertainment. When a man food tasting, draw prizes. The winner is it's a time to get your whole bridal party involved. Stop by and see the top wedding suppliers in the industry. For additional information, visit www.samanthasbridal.co.ke or call 0722-480068. Testing, testing. <laughs> no, I'm <coughs> Thank you. 
Welcome back to Samba Buzz right here on KTN. Of course, we are telling you everything that you need to know about the World Cup. And just before the break, uh, uh, we were looking at uh, last night's matches, the results, and of course the teams that made it to the quarters. But right now, we'll be focusing on the African teams. And tonight, Algeria and Nigeria will be in action. Algeria uh, will be playing against Germany, while Nigeria will be playing against France. Let's have a look at the preview of what to expect tonight. France play Nigeria tonight in a match they will start as favorites to advance to the quarterfinals, though nothing is guaranteed. Over the opening three games, Nigeria won by a single goal against Bosnia and Herzegovina, having drawn with Iran and lost three to Argentina. What France coach Didier Deschamps will have found from his research by now is a side that is set up specifically to take on France, going by their style of play witness during the match against Argentina last week. The pace and power of Nigeria's attack line led by CSK Moscow forward Ahmed Musa, Victor Moses, Emmanuel Emenike and Peter Odemwingi could give France's defence its biggest test of the World Cup, despite them maintaining two clean sheets in the group stages against Honduras and Ecuador. The final tie of the deal will be 